Hello everyone, welcome to another NP Academy lecture. Today we will talk about how to diagnose and treat pyronephritis. We will talk about pyronephritis. We will talk about who gets it, what are the consequences of pyronephritis, consequence, uh, what causes the pyronephritis, how the patient will present to you, so what are signs and symptoms, how you will diagnose them and how you will treat them. And we will keep the focus on the outpatient management of adult patients. We will talk about adult patient and the outpatient management. Outpatient. And we will not talk about pyelonephritis in pediatric patient in peds in pregnancy in men and how they manage in the inpatient setting inpatient management mainly because those are those are the entirely different things that we will talk about some other day not today so let us start with urinary tract system that has two kidney this is your kidney kidney has a ureter this ureter open up in the bladder and then you have a urethra where you urinate kidney is located in the flank region this is located in your back on the lateral side right below the thoracic cavity and that area is called CVA like costo vertebral angle CVA so every now and then bacteria move up via the urethra and go to the bladder and this bacteria has a structure called adhesin and through this adhesin bacteria attached to the bladder wall and cause the inflammation of the bladder and that is called cystitis or UTI every now and then this bacteria move up through the ureter and go to the kidney and cause the infection to the kidney and this infection is called pyelonephritis so who gets it well pyelonephritis is not very common so that there are certain patients who are at the higher risk for getting pyelonephritis and those are your diabetic patient specifically the one who has uncontrolled diabetes or the one who has any kind of obstruction like kidney stone like tumor what happened is so say for example if you have a kidney stone or tumor it blocks the ureter then the urine does not come urine stay back up to the kidney and cause an infection also the patient who are immunosuppressed like the one who has uh, for example HIV or the one who are on the chemo drugs chemotherapy or maybe a little older patient more than 65 years of age so they are at the higher risk for getting pyelonephritis okay what are the consequences of pyelonephritis consequence well that's bad pyelonephritis pyelo means pyelonephritis can lead to uh, abscess in the kidney can cause the renal abscess it can cause the acute kidney injury aki it can cause the renal scarring and sometimes it can cause a full-blown sepsis so these are the consequences that's kind of rather uh, high rather you know very bad consequences so that's why you have to be very careful in diagnosing and treating pyelonephritis okay well what causes the pyelonephritis the cause of it the most common way of pyelonephritis is that bacteria move up from the bladder through the ureter and cause the infection that's the most common way however uh, you can get pyelonephritis directly from the bloodstream directly from the bloodstream infection that's kind of rare but it's possible so just look at the cause so one will be the via bladder route and that's your most common one 
and the cause is your gram negative bacteria the most common one is your e coli the almost 70 to 90 percent of the time is your e coli and then there are some other like uh, calypsiella pneumonia your proteus mirabilis these are all your gram negative bacteria that call uropathogen the other one is your pseudomonas there are certain group of patients who are at the high risk for pseudomonal infection and they are your nursing home resident nursing home patient patient who has a foley catheter patient who has been in the hospital a lot hospitalized patient you need to know this because not every antibiotic cover the pseudomonas only few antibiotics so these are the most common cause for uh, pyelonephritis the one that you get um, the infection through the bloodstream via bloodstream this is usually common among IV drug user IV drug users and the most common bacteria is gram positive bacteria and usually this is your staph either MRSA or MSSA either of them. those are the staph that can cause the um, Paronephritis. So these are the cause for the paronephritis. Now look at the sign and symptoms. How the patient will present to you. Uh, some of the common sign or symptom would be like UTI. Patient will have a dysuria. Uh, let's write it a little bit nicer. Dysuria. They will have a urinary frequency. Urgency. Sometimes they'll have a suprapubic pain. Suprapubic pain. Sometimes they'll have a hematuria. Not the gross hematuria, but microscopic hematuria. In the older patients, sometimes they usually have a confusion. Altered mental status. And in addition to that, patient will either have a flank pain or any systemic sign of infection such as fever, chill, nausea, vomiting. So these will be the sign of symptom for the paranephritis, UTI-like symptoms along with the systemic sign of infection. On physical exam, what you will find that patient will have uh, CVA tenderness. Most commonly one side but sometimes they will have both sides so you will have to palpate on both sides and sometimes they will also have supra pubic tenderness on palpitation so these are the two findings on the for the paranephritis the severe tenderness is the more specific for paranephritis well how are you going to diagnose them how you will diagnose them the diagnosis will be based on the UA. You will do the urine analysis and you are looking for bacteria and pyuria WBC. And in the case of pyelonephritis, you will have a significantly high WBC. You will also have a leukocyte, a strage. Sometime you will have a nitrite and sometime you will have a microscopic hematuria. So based on these UA results along with the physical exam of CVA tenderness is enough to diagnose the paronephritis. That's how to diagnose. Also to know that whenever you are suspecting the paronephritis, you have to get the urine culture. There is no option at this time. You have to get the urine culture. Okay. Do we need other, other blood work? Do we need the uh, other, other blood work? And chances are that you probably will need it. That also depends on the case-to-case -case basis. So, as you know, the consequences for the pyelonephritis is uh, sepsis, uh, AKI, the abscess formation. So, sometimes if the patient looks sick, it's appropriate to draw CBC to rule out any blood stream infection, any leuco any and basically elevated uh, WBC, any leukocytosis or any neutrophilia, elevated neutrophil. That depends on the case-to-case -case basis. If you are seeing the patient has a unstable vital signs like low blood pressure or tachycardia, 
and you worry about sepsis then it's okay to draw and look for the lactic acid to rule out sepsis just so you know if the patient has a sepsis in that case you will have to get blood culture because urosepsis are not good uh, it's appropriate to draw the CMP to rule out AKI but this will be case to case basis not every person will need this workup but most commonly yes you will definitely need it if you are gonna admit the patient well how about imaging do we need imaging this also vary from case to case basis the purpose of imaging is to rule out any obstruction specifically if you're suspecting kidney stone or any tumor or to rule out any abscess formation if you're suspecting so or if you have started on the medication and patient did not have any improvement in 48 hours then it's appropriate to get the imaging done and the most common imaging is your CT non-contrast CT non-contrast CT of the abdomen and pelvis this non-contrast CT will tell you about abscess and obstruction now you will need contrast CT when you are looking for um, a renal perfusion just so you know uh, CT can also tell you the inflammation in the kidney but if you have early paranephritis CT might be normal so in that case your physical exam of severe tenderness and UA is more specific to diagnose the uh, paranephritis okay now how are you going to treat them the treatment and we are talking about treatment of the patient in the outpatient basis at any sign of sepsis unstable vital signs or if you know that patient will not have a good follow-up in 48 hours in that case you, it's okay to admit the patient however if the patient has a stable vital signs and can tolerate oral fluid and liquid and food and can be followed up in 48 hours then it's okay to manage them on outpatient basis so on the outpatient treatment I'm talking about outpatient the D drug of choice for pyronephritis is your fluoroquinolone. This is the drug of choice. And the reason is that this fluoroquinolone, it has a very good coverage for all the gram-positive, gram-negative, specifically the uropathogen. It has a coverage for pseudomonas also, pseudomonas. And it has a very good penetration to kidney, and bladder very good concentration this is a wonderful drug and what is the drug that we use this is your cipro fluoxacin 500 milligram bid for seven days or or your levo fluoxacin that is your 750 milligram once a day daily for seven days what I do usually it's recommended to do that it's okay to use also one dose of rosephine rosephine just one dose one gram either IV or IM and then you follow up with either Cipro or Levo for seven days this as you know this rosephine is your third generation cephalosporine this is your third generation cephalosporine this is a very good coverage for the gram negative uropathogen it's very stable it's a longer half-life so this combination of one time dose of rosephine along with seven day course of cipro or seven day course of levofloxacin work really great however if patient cannot tolerate the cipro or levo if they are intolerant to fluoroquinolone then you're in trouble in that case what I do is that I still go ahead and give them the one gram IM or IV rosephine and then I send them home with Bactrim. One, DS, we use, always use DS, one tab um, BID for 10 days. Or the other alternative would be along with the rosephine is the Cefdinier. Cefdinier, uh, this is 300 milligram BID for 14 days. So these are the typical management uh, to, to treat the paronephritis. Also, these patients need to be followed up in 48 hours to make sure they are doing good. If not, then hopefully by then you will have a culture result and you will go from there. So this is all about paronephritis. Thank you very much and I will see you next time.